So the Oklahoma City Thunder, Sam, you've said it before. If you sleep on them, they'll hit you in the head. Josh Giddy, Giddy, Giddy with 28, <laughs> man, 9 and 9. Kid, man. NBA Academy People don't like, they don't like him because his game is a little unorthodox. Look at the results. That's all I care about, results. Yeah, he'll burn you. I mean, he and Shea Gilgis Alexander, look, the Thunder's still searching for that breakout yeah. season. But the two guys in the backcourt, it seems like those are foundation pieces. Oh, they are. And the season that uh, Shea's having, it's, uh, you know, he's an obvious all-star. And they're just progressively getting better. And obviously, he's leading the charge with that. And they've, they've established a guy, and they're just going to keep moving forward. And uh, Ben Simmons sitting this one out. So when you look at the Nets, now you go, okay, without KD, lost a couple here, you were rolling. Uh, do you think they have it to, to, you know, stand the test of time with KD out for about a month? You know, I felt that way. So I did the Nets uh, first game without KD this past Thursday when they faced the Boston Celtics. I spoke with Ben Simmons before the game uh, privately, and he, and he talked about the need to step up and, and make sure that he asserted himself more. But he didn't necessarily say he was going to take more shots. And actually, in that game, he took three shots. He was 0 for 3. He got 13 assists, 0 points. They will need more on the offensive end from him. He has to be a threat. Those 13 assists that he had, he'll have games like that. They do equate to points. But he's going to have to get aggressive just to, to make it even. And you know, he was a plus 10 in that game. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I understand. You know, he, he affects the game in a positive way. Regard, now, he's going to have to score some. With, uh, with KD out, mm -hmm. his role will change because of that. But he doesn't necessarily have to score when they're healthy. Yeah, and Sam, that's the point I was going to ask you about when I think of the last time we saw Ben Simmons on the floor and he had those 13 assists and he was plus 10 and he looked at the shooting percentages for all the other guys on the team and you're like, oh, yeah, everybody shot over 50%. Kyrie Irving today, 7 for 20. Royce O'Neal, 4 for 10. Joe Harris, 3 for 9. I feel like that's the Ben Simmons effect for the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, and Coach said it best, man. If they're healthy with KD, he doesn't have to be a primary offensive player. They don't really need his scoring. But without KD, they need to Ben Simmons back in Philly. You know, people forget Ben averaged 16, 17 points a game. Yeah. And he can score in the paint. And I keep saying this, and I will say it to him time and time again. In the first half, Ben, if you go to the free throw line 10 times and don't make one, I wouldn't care because we're getting in the bonus. We're getting fouls on the other team starters. So it's going to be a, pu a plus for us towards the end of the game anyway. But he's got to start driving to the basket, trying to create things, and not just driving, go to finish because now people play him to pass when he gets to the basket. And without KD, Chris and Coach, I don't know if they can hang on enough to where they can stay in that top four, top six, without Kevin Durant, unless Ben Simmons at least gives you 15, 16 points. It's a pivotal period. Well, I look at the Oklahoma City Thunder. I see their record now, right, after this win. 20 and 20 and 23 at the halfway mark of the season. I'm like, okay, hovering right around 500. Coach and coach, I see you both kind of looking like, yeah, if you got Josh Giddy, SGA, this is a team that in the second half of the season – could be poised to make a push, right? Like, their season isn't a lost season like some of those in the past. You know, you look at the standings now, and there's two games that separate 6th and 13th. I mean, the second half of the season is really going to be interesting to see what happens with those 7-8 teams because they're all jump, they're all bunched up together. And Oklahoma City, didn't, nobody expected them to be there. Nobody expected Utah to be there. Some teams, <laughs> you didn't expect the Lakers to be there. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. But they, they come out, they play hard every night, they're well coached, they're all on the same page, and that's a winning formula if you do that every night. Now, I know this is the first time that you're sitting here and you are here together with me on this very show, but Sam, you know this. Next tape coming up next, baby. Uh, we got, yeah, we, we got, going left. Right we going left all day, Sam. Let's go. Next tape, something that hasn't been done since. It's Randall or Bronson, Chris? Hmm? Which one can go into the offense? Yeah. Both. Come on, man. Two? Put yeah, two yeah. lefties. Come on, now. We're going to the all You know that. Got to make a choice. Yeah, choice is both. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma City Thunder, congrats to them. Winners in five of their last six. And as we say on this show, getting giddy with it. Josh Giddy, 28 points, nine rebounds, nine assists, and product of the NBA Academy. So, Josh, let's talk about that first. In that process, going through the NBA Academy and coming into the NBA, how that helped you to be prepared for the league. Yeah, um, I mean, it was big time for me. I think I went to the academy when I was about 16 years old. 
um, and I was there till I was 18. Um, that got me ready, and not only for you know for basketball, but um, for life. You know, outside of um, being a kid and, and being away from your parents, and um, I had to learn to grow up quickly. So um, it was an awesome experience for me. Um, they give you a lot of opportunity to showcase yourself, you know, not only to your country, but you know to the rest of the world. And um, I was very fortunate enough to be there for you know 18 months, and um, I say that 18 months changed my life. Josh, this is uh, Coach Stotts, and what I want to know is I had Andrew Bogut for his first two years in Milwaukee, and I see you're from Melbourne as well, so I was wondering if you had any interaction with, with Andrew uh, in Melbourne or as you were getting preparing for the NBA. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, obviously, Bogues was, um, you know, a big part of the Australian national team, and uh, he, he retired right as I started uh, playing professional basketball. So uh, I've spoken a lot with him, um, you know, pre-draft, during the seasons. Um, he's been great for me. Um, he's obviously, you know, Australian basketball icon, um, and he, he's been great, you know, helping me through things on and off the court. Um, so, yeah, he, he's been awesome, and we've had a lot to do with each other over the last, you know, 24 months. Josh, Sam Mitchell here. I want to ask you guys this. You guys hovering around that 500. You're playing great basketball. I love watching you guys play because y'all can flat out score the rock. What is it going to take on in this second half for you guys to continue to make a push? Because I know the way you guys are playing, you want to make that play and make the playoff. Can you guys make it? And what is it going to take for you guys to keep climbing that ladder to break that, that playoff drought and to get in that play in, if nothing else? Yeah, no, we could definitely make it. Um, we've got a really talented team. Um, but I think the important thing for our group is, you know, we know we've been uh, playing well, winning games lately, but uh, it's not to look, we can't look, you know, too far ahead. Uh, we've still got another, you know, 40 or so games to play. Um, but we know, you know, guys will be checking the standards and seeing where we are. But um, we've got to continue to play, you know, our style of basketball. I think when we're defending, you know, at a high level, we're getting out and running in transition. Uh, we look good and we can, you know, cause some problems for teams. And, um, you know, when we're playing that way, uh, we look good. So, we need to continue to do that for however many games we've got left um, because, you know, this competition's tight. I think, you know, that both conferences, um, you know, from the first seed to the, you know, eighth or whatever, it's, it's a few games. So um, we're playing the right way now, but um, as I said, still a lot of season to go, but, um, you know, I'm confident in what our team can do. Josh, Chris Haynes here. Um, before the season started, you know, there was a lot of talk about OKC would be one of those teams that would probably be lower in the standings because there is a big, you know, there is a big player looming out there that's going to be in the 2023 NBA draft. So when you heard those type of whisper, you know, whispers coming from the outside, what was the team's mindset, you know, as it pertains to people talking about, you know, this is a chance for OKC to continue to um, pile up on top players? Yeah, I mean, we've got a really talented group, um, I think. Uh, you know, obviously everyone's talking about the draft and the, the players that are coming in. Uh, but, you know, our guys aren't, aren't bothered about that. Um, I think uh, our guys, you know, we're focused on the right things. And um, obviously the expectation for us, you know, coming into the season was that we were going to be a young team. We're probably going to be, you know, tanking is, you know, what people would be saying. I didn't want to say uh, that. But we've got, a, we've got a really talented group. Um, you know, guys are playing the right way, and I think uh, we're making a bit of noise and, you know, exceeding people's expectations. But uh, we were all confident in what we could do um, within our group, and, you know, we're happy with where we're at now, but there's, as I said, there's still a long way to go. Josh Giddy, a guy who won Rookie of the Month four times uh, and also has scored over 20 yeah, in three watch, straight okay. games. Congratulations. And a triple-double threat, 90 and nine out. Watch. And also a graduate from NBA Academy. Thank you for stopping by game time. We appreciate you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Well, you know, Josh Giddy and the Thunder, you know, they're a team that's certainly headed in the right direction, but a team that has also been headed in the wrong direction for years now, Sam. The New York Knicks. Oh, you thought we were done? No, I knew we were talking about the Knicks. How we try to listen to that? A bird in my ear is telling me we're going to talk about the Knicks. A team that eliminated Did you see my hair a few times in the playoffs, those New York Knicks. Uh, no, but Sam. And I, I'm going to hurt your feelings, too, because you all giddy about the Knicks, but you got to understand something. If they finish fifth, Think about who they're going to have to play. Either Philly, Cleveland, or Brooklyn. If they finish fifth now, so you.